Hey everybody, it's Woody from Church Production. I just want to talk to you guys today about motion graphics. We're going to make something, we're going to make something cool, we're going to make something quick, we're going to make something cheap. Now this is actually the graphic in question. This is our final product. This is what we're going to try and make. So this is something really basic, really simple. If you haven't done a lot with motion graphics, this is a pretty good place to start. So let's get into it. I've got a couple of images here. I've got one from Christian Loner. We've got these mountains here. And I've got another from Joel Philippe called The Lost Medusa. I'm going to name it something different. So what I got going on here, we've got images from Unsplash. Unsplash is totally free. It's a free website. You can use the photos. You can do whatever you want with them. It's totally up to you. So at this point, we're going to take our images into After Effects here. We're going to create a new composition. Here's our composition. So I'm going to call this original. Uh, I'm going to look at some stuff here. We've got a 19 by 20. Whoa. Got a 1920 by 1080 timeline. That's perfect. Frame rate's just right. I'm going to set our duration to 120. One minute, 20 seconds, zero, zero frames. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this next bit, I've set our viewing areas up in a specific way, our monitors up, so that we can kind of see a couple things at once. So we've got two of them. I've set it to two views horizontal. And then uh, our first one, we're going to select active camera. See, we've got a couple options here, but we're going to go with active camera for the first one. And then for our second window, we're going to pick top. What this is going to let us do is see both a top down view and an active view of our 3D space. So here we go. Let's start grabbing stuff. We're going to grab our magic mountains. We're going to grab our super lotus. So we're going to add a new camera here. This is going to help us out a lot. Uh, notice a couple of things with this camera. This is mostly the like standard preset, but I did change a couple things. We are no longer using the default aperture settings. So depth of field is on, but we are going to f1.0. A little crazy, I know, but for our purposes, it'll work just fine. So here we go. We've got everything on the table here. I'm going to start clicking this box down here. Start turning both of these guys into 3D layers. Camera is a 3D layer by default, so we don't get that option. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna create an orbit null. Orbit nulls help you move the camera around. It's just an extra little layer to help keep things moving. So, got our null, we got our camera. We got our super awesome stock photos. Let's keep going. So, uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda leave everything as it is, and I'm gonna go into a completely different task. We're gonna take what I've called Super Lotus, and we're gonna change this. I'm gonna press Command Shift C, to create a pre-comp. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, Super Lotus Comp. Works for me. We're gonna go into it and we're gonna start making some changes here. So now I wanna talk a little bit about blending modes. Blending modes are super awesome. So we've got a whole bunch of options here. We've got you know various different names. They all do different things. It's pretty exhausting to try and figure out all of them. But for today, for right now, we're just going to go with multiply. Now you can see I've cloned this layer. I've pressed command D to create a clone. I'm going to pull it around here and you can see what multiply is doing. Multiply is allowing us to see the darker parts of an image and it's kind of taking all of the brighter sections and making them a little bit more invisible. So got that. I'm moving stuff around. Most of you guys are probably already familiar with blending modes. So I'm going to start moving this around, doing stuff, using my keyboard shortcuts over here. So I'm going to just start cloning, dragging, rotating to just make a crazy composition full of these darker spots in the image. So I'll make another one over here. I'll make another. Now, um, if this were a classroom, I would ask everyone to raise their hands and tell me what's going wrong right now. But this is the internet, so it's a little different. So uh, what I'm gonna undo and redo is a problem with boxing here. So I'm gonna get rid of our clones for a second, even the very first one. Just gonna delete them. And then I'm gonna start a new one. Once again, Command D, I've cloned the Super Lotus layer and I'm gonna create a circle over a good chunk of the data here using the circle tool up top here. Um, now this is functioning as a mask and we are gonna use it to kind of pick the good parts of our image. 
So I'm going to create some feathering on the mask. There's a couple ways to do this. This is the way we'll do it for right now. Um, not too much. This should be pretty much fine. We're going to go back to our blend mode. I'm going to go back to multiply. And then here we go. We've got our little orb of darkness again. So I'm going to clone that. Um, actually, I'm going to take the first one. And then move it around a little bit. So we've got this perfect dark little plate here. This is a really great image. This is really helpful for motion graphics. Um, I might press S and do a little bit of adjustments with scale here. Um, kind of move things around. Um, I'm switching back and forth between various control tools by pressing W and V for rotate and for move. So keep going with that. Keep things moving along here. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to see everything in the image. Um, the idea is to make it look different and to have a lot of content going on. We're going to kind of move through the whole thing. If it looks too repetitive, that's not going to be good. So I'm going to just keep playing with things until we get something nice here. Once again, the idea is make something fast, make something quick, make something cheap, make something good, something we can play. Something the pastor is going to be like, hey, where'd you get that? And then I'll be like, I made that. So if I go back to original here, we've changed this image a lot. You can see this image is pretty big. We're viewing it through our 1080 frame, um, more specifically through our camera. And what we got going on here is a lot more image than we can use. And that's okay. So at this point, it's probably good to start moving our layers around. I'm going to grab this layer here, move it back and forth a little bit. I wanted it right where it was. So actually what I'm going to grab is the layer behind it, these magic mountains, and I'm going to move them behind. Now we're not going to be doing a whole lot with these magic mountains. They're kind of just a background texture. We're not really going to see them. This time I'm going to do the exact opposite of what we did with Multiply. I'm going to go to blending modes and I'm going to grab screen. So we've got screen and what screen does is saves all the brightness information and lets go of all the darks. So at this moment, we've got a bunch of bright stuff holding on from the Super Lotus going over these magic mountains. Now we might play with this in a little bit, uh, but I want to show off what we got here. We have this big old layer and it can travel through this whole system, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's really bright. Usually that's good to end up with something either really bright or really dark because you can just put black or white text over it. There's you know, competing theories and different styles about how to do this, but for the sake of this instructional, I'm just gonna go with bright. So, I'm going to put that back to center. Um, I've pretty much got this background where I want it. At this point, I'm ready to start moving the camera around. So I'm going to mess with the position here. We're going to start setting a keyframe. We're going to move this around. Um, like I said, the orbit null is just going to move the camera. Really all it is is a null that the camera is parented to. So if you're into After Effects, you like parenting, or you're into parenting and you like After Effects, one or both. A lot of you are dads out there. Um, this is how it goes. So we're going to go to the other end. We're going to do the same thing in a different direction. So we've effectively scanned the whole image. So we don't want the end of it. We don't want to lose anything. We're losing our magic mountains a little early here. I want to do that. Um, that's probably pretty good. We could probably move our mountains up a little bit more. That might save us a little bit of space here. So we're not completely wasting our real estate. So I'm going to move that over. Mm, still not as much as I'd like. Doesn't really make that much sense. Anyways, I'm going to keep going. The other side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get a little bit more adjustment room. So um, at this point, we actually have an animation already. Um, it's going to play back pretty slow, but in the end, we'll be able to see it. All right, so what we have here is just a basic, basic animation. This isn't much. So you can see as we roll along the thing here, actually this is pretty slow. So stretch out over a minute, we got a little bit of a problem here. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cloning more stuff. I'm going to add more dimensionality. So I'm going to clone this layer, this Super Lotus Comp. So I've changed it back to normal and I'm messing with the opacity a little bit. Here's why. At this point I could do another screen but we've got so much white going on in the frame. At this point, it'd just be complete overkill to have another layer with more white. So I'm going to go back to normal, 
and I'm going to set the opacity around, let's do, let's do 45. 45 is good. We still have a super bright frame. Here's where the money happens. This is all the money right here. I'm going to bring this forward and we're going to have yet another layer in our 3D space. And if you'll recall, we turned depth of field on. So we've got even more fun going on with a blur layer. What this does is automatically blurs things. So I don't have to mess around with adding blur layers above or beneath things. We might add a little bit more to the background back here, but I actually think this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to keep going with it. Once again, things are moving a little bit slowly. Uh, it's probably just my computer, but it is what it is. We'll continue on. So some of you might be ahead of me already and you're seeing a problem here. And you're right, is that we have some repeating going on between here. Now it's kind of cool, but it's a little bit distracting because it draws attention to the effect itself. It feels a little bit less organic than if we had had two separate distinct layers. So an easy way to do this, an easy, quick, super cheap, super dirty way to do it, is to just go to scale, unhook the link here, go to this value, the Y value, and just make it negative. Just flip everything around. Now, we're almost there. That's not quite it. We need a little bit more inversion to make it sell. So I'm gonna go to the X value and do the same over here. At this point, we've got a pretty different looking image. Might still not be what I want, but that's okay because we've got a lot of room to play around here. So I can actually drag this up and down until I can kind of find the sweet spot. That's good. That's looking a little bit more like it. Ah, cool. Yeah, all right. Now we've got something we can use. This is cool, this is starting to look good. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is take things up a layer. I'm gonna make a new comp. This one's gonna be a perfect minute. And I'm gonna name this main. So main is always my top comp. I always export from a main. So at this point, I can take original and I can bounce that in here. And it's gonna functionally be the same. This layer is identical except for the composition is going out of this composition. These timelines don't quite match up together, but we're gonna fix that in order to create a loop. Did I mention we were gonna loop this? We're gonna loop this and it looks, it's gonna look so nice. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take original and I'm gonna rename this one. I'm gonna rename this loop setup. Great. So what I can do with loop setup that I can't really do with anything else here is I can train it to fade in over time. So if I grab it towards the 20 second mark, I know already from the length of the original composition that I have 20 seconds of extra space after the main composition ends. So I'm gonna drop that right in. I'm gonna set that right here towards the end here. This is kind of a rough estimate. That's really okay. It's going to be fine. You'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here. I'm also going to lose the beginning of this. I'm actually going to pull out all the way to the end here so that we get pretty much the identical set of frames towards the beginning and end. So what that does, if we go to both endpoints in and out, we should have pretty much identical spots here. It should be pretty much the same. Cool. So what we can do here, as you can see, we still have a hard cut. So I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to use the opacity and it's going to be good. It's going to be done. We're keeping things fast. We're keeping things cheap. We're keeping things simple. So opacity on one end, I'm going to slide that over to the other. I'm going to drop down the opacity here. Now, I can't tell immediately, but I'm going to predict that this gets a little weird and a little choppy in here when I've got these two doubled over each other. So I left myself a lot of room. I'm actually gonna bring the ramp over a little bit more. So that we're spending a little bit less time with this awkward sort of in-between frame state. Hmm, might be all right. I'm gonna pull it back a little farther. That's the beauty of going too long in the original and cropping to one minute in the other is you can kind of keep your loop exactly where you're looking to have it. So, 
between these two, I can foresee no problem we're about to have. So at this point, we've got our motion background. So I'm going to export this and we'll take a look. I'm going to go to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder, and we're going to go into the source. Match source high bitrate usually does the trick. We might lose a little color data with the H.264 codec. At least on my machine, it tends to work that way. Some of y'all might have similar problems. Um, this is usually good if you set it to this preset. Uh, I'm going to add maximum render quality. We could get into the ins and outs of how to export this, but I'm happy with the way things are. So uh, we'll export. All right. We're done. Thanks everybody for sticking with this. Looks like our video is finished. Here's our completed motion background. Hopefully this gives you a couple ideas on how to make some stuff of your own. Obviously you can use any images you want with this. Hopefully it's another tool in your tool belt. This has been Woody for churchproduction.com. Be sure to check back with us for all sorts of news and updates about the latest in church tech. Thanks. I'll see you later.